See this tower? It dominates New York City's downtown skyline, a sleek glass giant meant to command million-dollar views of the East River. At first glance, it seems like another impressive addition to an ever-evolving skyline. But look again. Something's not right. The tower isn't standing straight. It's leaning, visibly tilting away from the street below. This is One Seaport, a luxury tower that was meant to be a symbol of ambition. Now, it's an abandoned eyesore, a multi-million dollar testament to a construction nightmare. Lawsuits swirl, engineers scratching their heads, and potential residents turn away in disbelief. How did a state-of-the-art skyscraper end up tilting before it was even finished? Look closely at the eastern edge of Lower Manhattan, where the bustling financial district gives way to the East River. Here, on a narrow strip of land, stands 161 Maiden Lane. It looks like any other sleek skyscraper, but this site has a story older than the skyline itself. Centuries ago, this building wouldn't have stood on solid ground. It would have been underwater. Landfill in the 18th century pushed the shoreline outwards, creating space for a thriving maritime hub. Ships lined South Street, known then as Packet Row, their masts like a dense forest against the backdrop of a growing city. But as the shipping industry declined, this waterfront became a ghost of its former self. Grand plans were floated, a World Trade Center on the river, a neighborhood built atop a submerged highway, even a Frank Gehry-designed Guggenheim. But those dreams faded. Now, look north. The cobblestones and 19th century buildings of the South Street Seaport Historic District are frozen in time. Just south, massive office towers dominate the skyline. These were the first wave of downtown's transformation. But along the water's edge, something new stirs. A scenic esplanade bustling with walkers and cyclists. It's here, within this patchwork of past, present, and potential, that 161 Maiden Lane staked its claim. This 5,000 square foot plot was destined to become downtown's first luxury residential tower directly fronting the East River. Developer Fortis Property Group bet big, a 60-story glass giant promising million-dollar views. But 161 Maiden Lane wasn't a sure thing. It's been a revolving door of designs, a 52-story slab in 2007, a 175-unit tower in 2010. The price tag kept rising, $41 million, then $64 million as developers jumped ship. This wasn't just about construction, it was about fulfilling the waterfront's long-broken promises. Construction finally began in 2015, or did it? The Department of Buildings slapped the project with numerous code violations. In 2017, a horrific accident claimed the life of a worker, halting progress for months. Yet, the sleek tower continued its climb, apartments selling briskly with those million-dollar views. By 2018, cracks began to show in the facade of 161 Maiden Lane's success story. Literally, concrete rained down onto the street, a sign of construction woes. Delays piled up and the price tag ballooned. The developers scrambled for extra funding, but the real shocker was yet to come. In 2019, the unthinkable happened. The contractor, locked in a bitter dispute with the developer, revealed a bombshell secret. Their measurements confirmed what some had begun to whisper. 161 Maiden Lane wasn't quite vertical. It leaned a surprising three inches, or about the width of a smartphone, to the north. So how can a skyscraper end up like this? It all starts with the ground beneath. Think of New York City's bedrock like a sturdy table, the ideal foundation for massive structures. Unfortunately for 161 Maiden Lane, its site lacks that solid base. It sits on landfill created centuries ago when the East River shoreline was extended. Instead of firm bedrock, engineers face layers of sand and unpredictable soil, a much less stable platform. This is where things get interesting. Typically, skyscrapers in Manhattan would utilize systems like deep-drilled piles or caissons. 
Essentially, massive columns driven far down until they hit that solid bedrock. But at 161 Maiden Lane, the bedrock lies between 132 to 166 feet down. Drilling to that depth is incredibly expensive and complex. So the engineers got innovative. Their proposed alternative? A system called jet grout soil improvement. Picture this. High-powered jets force a mixture into the sandy soil to a depth of 55 feet, solidifying it and creating a much stronger layer to support the building. On top of this improved layer, instead of piles, they opted for a huge, thick, reinforced concrete mat. Think of it like a giant raft spreading the tower's weight. This system was certainly more budget-friendly, saving the developers roughly $6 million. However, it introduced a whole new set of challenges. This type of foundation, while adequate, is inherently less rigid than being anchored directly to bedrock. This flexibility becomes a big problem when you have a skyscraper with an ultra-slim aspect ratio, height compared to width, of 15 to 1, like 161 Maiden Lane. Now, let's talk about wind. Lower Manhattan faces strong winds whipping off the East River. With that slender profile, the tower is prone to swaying and, more significantly, to overturning forces, wind trying to tip it over. The engineers had to carefully analyze how the flexible foundation would interact with this. Picture the swaying of the tower as causing the mat to rotate slightly. Imagine one side of the mat pushing into the soil and the other side pulling slightly away. This is where those 150-foot-long rock anchors come in drilled down to prevent the mat from lifting. However, even with these anchors, the engineers had to run complex simulations. They looked at what would happen as the building's massive weight gradually settled onto the mat. This settlement would cause some loss of tension in those anchors. See here, in this figure, demonstrates how much of the mat would lift, and therefore how much additional sway the tower might experience under different conditions. The engineers had to design the tower to be sturdy enough to handle this. The engineers designed 161 Maiden Lane knowing its foundation would be less rigid than bedrock, and they took steps to address this. They calculated that the building would naturally sway more in the wind and made the structure stronger to handle those extra stresses. The sloshing dampers at the top were included to make the swaying less noticeable for residents. However, the actual 3-inch lean isn't primarily due to the foundation design. The most likely cause is uneven settling of the building as its immense weight compresses the soil underneath it. Imagine the ground under one corner of the foundation mat sinking slightly more than the other side, then another side. This uneven settling would stress the rock anchors differently, causing the mat to tilt slightly and the whole tower to lean in that direction. So, while the engineers anticipated the challenges of the site and designed for increased sway, the lean itself likely results from the unpredictable nature of the ground conditions. This unforeseen tilt set off a cascade of problems. Imagine the ripple effects of this discovery, even before the building was complete, with prices upwards of a million dollars per apartment, buyers had snapped up a significant number of units. However, everything changed when the building's lean became public knowledge. The original contractor and the developer quickly found themselves locked in a bitter legal battle, each blaming the other for the problem. It turns out the lean had been noticed much earlier and allegedly caused significant difficulties in installing the sleek glass facade. There were even fears that the tilt could compromise the building's long-term safety, with problems ranging from malfunctioning windows to potential water damage. Despite these troubles, the developer insisted that the project be completed, claiming the building remained structurally sound. But progress stalled, with construction put on hold for years now. The only progress has been redesigning the glass facade to accommodate the building's unintended lean awkwardly. With lawsuits involving multiple parties dragging on, the developer maintained their commitment to finishing the tower, but any specific timeline seems impossible. 
The once highly anticipated luxury apartments seem destined to remain empty for the foreseeable future as the legal wrangling continues. 161 Maiden Lane Story is a fascinating look at the challenges of big city building. What do you think? Could they have avoided the lean? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that notification bell to stay up to date on our latest uploads.